again. I'm very delighted to have amidst us Sister Sona. Thank you so much for joining. And <laughs> before I pass it on to you, I'll just uh, give a brief introduction because uh, you have one of our, you're this one of the speakers who's come here for the first time. But I'm sure Sister Sona, many people know her very well. Actually, she has been introduced to spirituality and meditation from very young teenage years and um, she was amazed at how quickly and effectively learning meditation enhanced her ability to focus and absorb and after that there's no looking back she has been trained as a professional translator and interpreter also and she speaks seven languages and let me tell you she is into Brahma Kumaris for almost now 30 years and she had been serving in Australia before uh, for around a few years from 2001 to 6 and uh, she was holding the role of uh, center coordinator the retreat center coordinator there in Blue Mountain Sydney and from March 2008 she has been into uh, the country of Abu Dhabi that province and uh, she basically uh, is working I mean her service area now is a director of inner space center where she coordinates all the activities of that center and um, she has actually visited many countries it's I think it's the entire globe I'm not reading and she basically does a lot of corporate service in Abu Dhabi all the big companies which are there to name a few like Etihad Airways various embassies Cleveland Clinic London College Imperial College for diabetes many so she takes a lot of sessions over there and teaches meditation to people and uh, as usual a poem for her her name itself suggests that she is as beautiful as real gold, right? Sona as real gold, which gives her the capacity as per the situation to mold. She deals with everyone without the need to scold and makes sure that relationships don't manifest the fold. So today on cleanliness, her thoughts she shall unfold which then don't just remain to us but are ready to be sold and cast a magnificent spell on everyone with the ability to hold so there you are the journey from gold to mold fold and sold and now finally a few lines on the virtue of cleanliness so today with her let's learn the lesson of how to develop mental cleanliness and in our dealings with others start practicing forgiveness radiate in the atmosphere the vibrations of kindness so that we can fly in the open sky with carefreeness and hence practice the act of inculcating godliness so that then we can be miles and miles away from loneliness so um, thank you once again for joining sister Sona and the stage is all yours thank you over to you Thank you, Manoj Bhai, and thank you to everyone on the online, because um, yes, it's the first time I've joined such a session. So uh, it's always a pleasure to meet the family, no matter where you are. And our Zoom world has made it so much easier for that to happen. So warm welcome to all of you to uh, the session as well. And um, yeah, it's a very interesting value that you've brought up today, cleanliness because we are more used to the typical values like honesty, integrity. And yet, you know, it's uh, interesting that on in Dadi Janki Stam, you know, the memorial place, out of the three main virtues they put up as being something that was dear to Dadi's heart, of all the virtues in the world, the one, one of the ones they chose was cleanliness, Safai. And, um, you know, in the Lokic world too, uh, cleanliness, you know, in the outside world, cleanliness is um, to some people a very big thing. So is everyone online a meditator? Everyone is a BK or do we have any guests here who are joining for the first time? Yes, actually we have, uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. We have quite a few BKs as usual. It's good that they are always there to spread this Mansa Seva, but a few uh, new people are also there usually. So we'll try okay, so to... but people who are totally new and have never uh, come to a meditation center, the Brahma Kumaris, or is it all people who have done some meditation with us? 
Yes, I think uh, many of them attend the sessions, so they have done meditation in the past at least. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Just uh, just so I know, um, you know, who's in the audience and who's listening. Um, so I was just thinking, you know, in the world. I don't know about you, but I've lived with many friends and people in different meditation groups and centers around. Um, I was 14 years in Australia, so I was managing the retreat center for six years. And in that time, there was at one point in time, there were 22 of us living together. So if you asked each one of us to define cleanliness, believe me, the definitions and the uh, examples of cleanliness you'd get would be incredibly different from each one. Currently, I live in a meditation center in Abu Dhabi and I just happen to be living with lots of uh, brothers. It's not a sister in the center, it's only me. What can I say? I mean, honestly, what can I say about cleanliness? <laughs> Sometimes when the, when the boys say, oh, we've cleaned the kitchen, I go, okay. I wait for them to all disperse and then I start cleaning the kitchen. So what does that tell you about cleanliness, you know? So cleanliness is um, very much something that is uh, based on what you see. Very much about what you see. I remember the opposite happening to me when I was much younger, maybe half my age, and I was living in the Blue Mountains. And at reception, you know, I, I was very tidy. I'd put the pens in the little sort of pen holder and paper wherever, but I never bothered to wipe down the desk. And it was always dusty and, you know, and there was one lady who was much older than me and she would be on the shift after me. And she would walk in with her gloves <laughs> and her gloves and her spray and she'd be spraying down the desk and everything around. And I thought to myself, what on earth is she cleaning? It's clean. I mean, I put all the pens in and, you know, the computer is in the right spot and what's her problem? It's so subjective. External cleanliness is so subjective. So imagine what internal cleanliness means and how different it is for each one of us. By definition, what is clean is something that is free from dirt. So you could say it's uncontaminated. So cleanliness. I thought cleanliness just meant your ability to accept or like things that are clean around you. But one definition of cleanliness I particularly liked, which is it is um, something that is being kept clean over time. Cleanliness is an active action, an active process to maintain a standard of cleanliness a standard of something being free from dirt. So like most values, cleanliness is something that takes time to practice and acquire, but it's also a process of maintaining it throughout my life so that whatever I'm looking at as being you know, clean or not clean, it's not a static thing. It's not like I can tick mark it today and it remains clean forever. No, it requires regular practice, regular looking at. So you talk about external cleanliness and as I said, everyone's uh, ability uh, to clean is different and everyone's definition of what is clean and what is dirty will be different. When we move inside, when we move towards spiritual cleanliness, inner cleanliness, cleanliness of the soul, cleanliness of the spirit. There are some very deep parallels to physical cleanliness. And I think, you know, um, external cleanliness can often be a reflection of how I am on my own inside. People who are used to keeping their mind clean, keeping their heart clean, keeping their subconscious clean, are often those who would like to keep things clean on the outside as well, 
who would prefer to live in a clean atmosphere, a clean environment. I'm sure many of you knew Daddy Junkie personally, and I'm not sure if you've ever walked into her bedroom or, you know, spaces where she lived. If you were to observe her surroundings, they were always immaculate, absolutely immaculate. She didn't like dust or dirt. She didn't like things being higgledy-piggledy either. You know, things had a particular place and she picked it up from there, she would put it back there. So cleanliness and tidiness, you know, they were very big for her, very, very big virtues. And I often used to think, What's going on inside here for daddy? You know, how she must be using something, using her intellect for something, and then bringing it back to center, bringing it back to soul and God. She uses her mind and then puts it right back in the right place. So cleanliness is not only about, you know, picking up a, a broom or a, a scrubber and and uh, cleaning something out. I think cleanliness has a lot to do with keeping things on the outside so well organized that things are where I need them, when I need them to be. The other thing about clean things, whether it's the outside or the inside, is where there is cleanliness, there is clarity. Anyone who wears um, spectacles like I do, you know, it's a common thing to keep your specs clean. And anyone who is dependent on their spectacles knows the difference between clean lenses and dirty lenses. It's, uh, you know, a world apart, two separate things altogether. You cannot see the world clearly when your lenses are dirty. In the same way, you know, bringing it right back to the soul internally. I need the lens with which I see the world to be constantly clean. If I want to be able to see clearly what is going on. Cleanliness leads to clarity of vision. And if I don't maintain that cleanliness, it is a natural process of everything to accumulate dirt. This old world that we live in, this um, broken down world in a way, it's a very dusty, dirty world. And the default would always be to go back to be accumulating dirt. Therefore, the regularity of cleanliness can't be overemphasized. So because the benchmark of cleanliness is different for all of us, I guess like every other value, I need to ask myself the question, how clean do I want to be? In some ways, this whole spiritual journey can be defined as a journey from unclean to clean. We often use the word pure purity. Well, pure water is clean water. And you know, the purest water is not water that is H2O. No. Pure water, real water, clean water, just means it's not contaminated with anything that will harm. But really good water, very pure water, is full of everything that is needed to nourish the body, to bring the right mix of salts and minerals and vitamins to the body. In fact, in the olden days in India and possibly around the world too, water that flew through herbs would pick up all these minerals and vitamins naturally. And that kind of water was known to be the best, often called spring water, you know, and uh, flowing water, the Ganges, which is today one of the most polluted rivers in the world, I think, used to be known to be a river that flew over, that was always flowing over um, herbs and 
things that it, it could pick up from. So purity and cleanliness doesn't mean something devoid of anything, no. It is that which can always bring benefit wherever it goes, that which nourishes wherever it goes. So the value of cleanliness, so important in the world. And again, moving inwards. I know I've given you quite a few examples of the outside world, you know, cleaning the kitchen, clean water. <laughs> but when I move within, when I come back to what this whole talk is about, about inner spiritual cleanliness, I think for me, Valuing cleanliness is really about valuing the unpolluted state of the soul. Sometimes I call it our factory settings. It is a state which is uncontaminated by any form of ego, arrogance, body consciousness whichever word you prefer to use. It is a state in which my intellect becomes an intellect that is non-stick. Many of you, I presume, are good cooks, good chefs. These days, a lot of the, the pots and pans that we use are non-stick pans. I definitely prefer a non-stick pan for a number of reasons. Um, of course, the best reason is that I don't burn anything because it's non-stick. It's easy to move things around in the pan, and, you know. Um, oil doesn't sort of get accumulated at the bottom with all the spices. So, you know, nothing burns. Second reason I like non-stick is because even if I do spend you know, time cooking a lot in it, it's always easy to clean. Nothing sticks to it much. You know, just a quick sponge and it's back to normal, back to factory settings, back to default, back to cleanliness. And the third thing I like about non-stick pans is I don't have to use a lot of additional fat and oil because um, yeah, there's, you know, the slide, slideability is very good. <laughs> you don't have to sort of coat them with, with oil to make sure that you can move things around. So coming back internally, a clean soul, a clean being is one who has a non-stick intellect. What do I mean by that? It's an intellect that doesn't allow anything to leave residue. And I think the intellect, as you all know, is a lens. It's the filter with which I see the world. The intellect is powered by my subconscious mind, the sanskaras, the old habits, the old patterns, the wiring inside. The word I like to use is the way I've been programmed. So if you imagine there's this programming inside you, and that is fueling the intellect, you know, the lens with which I am perceiving my entire world out there. If my intellect is affected by the residue that I carry within me, you know, the residue of old feelings, memories, which have probably now you know, been there for so long that they've created habits. The inner programming of the soul that is constantly playing in the background, constantly playing. Most of the time we're unaware. So if the intellect is constantly being bombarded by you know, all of this, how on earth can I have a clean and pure understanding and vision of the world around me? How on earth can I have a clean view, a clean perception, perspective 
on any human being or any situation. In that case, the dirt of the past is constantly coming over my lens. So now to deal with the dirt inside me is gonna take time. And that is a process of cleansing the soul. But what I can start to do is to closely watch this lens of the intellect and to observe for how long does that residue affect me? Because the quicker I can learn to keep my intellect clean and free from residue of the past, the more the intellect will support me to identify what it is that I need to clean on the inside. So for example, you were hurt in the past by something someone said, right? Let's say it's somebody in your family, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your husband, your child, whatever. Someone said something to you and it hurt your heart. And you've stored that away inside you. It's an unclean feeling. It's not something that is a pure positive feeling. And that's gone and got stored inside. In fact, it's been stored for so long that now it's created a little pattern, a little habit, which is every time you see that person, you pull up that feeling towards them. So every time you see them, you're seeing them in an unclean way. You are tainted. Your vision is tainted by something that you've stored inside. How can I train myself to keep cleaning the intellect of all these old memories and stains from the past? If the intellect becomes non-stick, it means that even if the memory comes up, it doesn't hold for long. It falls out, it falls down. And it doesn't influence my current present moment. If all these inner memories, which are dirty, are affecting my current moment, my present now, what kind of future am I gonna create? Exactly the same as what my past was. And so there can be no transformation within. It's really hard to create change, inner transformation, inner shifts if my past is having such a huge influence on my intellect, on that part of me, which is the filter, which is um, the part of me that actually gives me permission and allows me to interact with the outside world. So non-stick intellect is one that doesn't allow residue to stick to it to the point where the residue is affecting my decision-making and the clarity with which I see any person or situation. But to get to a place where I have a non-stick intellect also requires a lot of inner work. It needs three main qualities inside. The first quality is the quality of being super honest with the self. Every time an old memory comes up, you know, every time that you feel something of the past bubbling up into you. And how do you know that it's coming up? It creates a feeling. More than a thought, it'll create a negative feeling. So every time you feel an old negative feeling coming up, you know the gas is on inside and something is boiling. It's at that point that I need to be really honest with myself and say, hang on, something inside me is starting to affect the way I feel. If I carry on allowing it to affect me, it is going to be a stain on my intellect. That cleanliness and purity of my intellect will not be maintained. What that means is, my interaction with the entire external world is going to be unclean. 
And what's that going to finally lead me to? A consequence of unclean energy going out. And we know what that leads to? Unclean energy coming back. That's the law of karma. So ultimately, I'm putting more uncleanliness inside me. That's not going to flush out the soul. That's not going to clean me at all. So real honesty, where you sit and you go, hang on, something of the past is yet again affecting me. And if I can be really honest with you, for most of us, we are almost always consciously or unconsciously being affected by feelings of the past. May not like to accept it, but it's so, so unconscious. The other thing that affects us a lot is, um, or the other thing I need, you know, to be able to create cleanliness is a lot of courage, a lot of determination to allow myself to function with a clean intellect. Because what it means is that I need to change the way I deal with the world. The challenges I had out there, people who are challenges to me, situations that I found difficult, I'm gonna to have to face them. No more running away from them, thinking that, oh, I can escape this. I'm actually going to have to face them and I'm going to have to change the way I interact with them based on a clean intellect, a clean lens. And if I do that, and I change my lens from old memory to cleanliness of the soul, which is, as we know, just love. A vision of love, a vision of goodness, a vision of purity. It will create a different energy going out, a different consequence coming back. And as I start to absorb clean energy from the outside world into me, it creates very big shifts inside. You know, that's why many times we are told in our meditation classes, get blessings from people. What is a blessing from a person? Blessing coming towards me, the being, the soul is nothing but clean energy, pure energy, good energy. When people wish me well, even if I don't know it, that clean energy is affecting the soul and it's helping me to cleanse the rubbish that is within me. If people are constantly bombarding me with negative thoughts and feelings based on their last interaction with me, that energy, if it's not clean, is affecting me in a subconscious or an unconscious way. So what I really need is clean energy going out, a clean interaction with the world, and therefore clean energy coming back to me. I no longer want to keep absorbing any negative vibes, any unclean vibes into myself. So honesty or very being very transparent with the self. The second thing is real courage and determination to deal with the world in a very clean way and to make sure that my intellect is not being affected by my old memories. You know, to honestly catch them and not allow them to um, influence my current outlook, my current perception or perspective. Uh, in the outside world. And the third thing I really need, and that all forms of cleanliness need, is attention to the process. It is regularity in cleaning. You can never rest on your laurels. Clean today, you're going to need to clean again tomorrow. Most of us as old souls have so much unclean junk inside us. You know, it just keeps bubbling up all the time. In fact, the whole journey of spirituality is a journey of cleaning. So if, like me, you enjoy cleaning, you're in for a really happy day because it's fun. It's become a part of, um, it's, I look forward to cleaning myself up. 
And every time I have to go through that same pattern of, oh, oh, old feeling came up. Did I act on it? If I did, what reaction can I expect? You know, how can I stop that? I enjoy this whole process of cleaning my inside. Because I know that everything I can catch and clean now will stop a whole myriad, a whole domino effect of other actions. You know, if you drop one tiny little bit of sugar syrup or golden syrup or honey on the floor, you might overlook it and think, oh, I'll clean it tomorrow. By the time you get to it tomorrow, what's happened? You know, you've got a mountain of ants on top of it. And the way life is for us spiritual beings now, you people who are students of spirituality, we don't have time to put things off till tomorrow. Because by the time you come back to clean it, that one little bit of uncleanliness has attracted so much more rubbish to it. You know, one old memory, I'm sure you've had this experience, it can pull up another 50 memories within a minute. One leads to the second, second to the third, the third to the fourth, the monkey mind jumps so quickly. The monkey subconscious mind jumps even faster to all the memories that are sort of suppressed inside. So the attention, to pay so much attention to how often I'm taking time to reflect, to clean. And I think to really um, get a feeling, you know, for what is still left inside that I'm not ready to face. You know, it requires uh, regular looking inside. So we've talked a lot about cleanliness of the intellect. We've talked about cleanliness of looking within and catching what's happening in my memory bank, my subconscious mind. And whatever is happening inside, as we know, gets projected onto my conscious mind, which then is uh, observed as thoughts. So my thinking is also an indication of the level of cleanliness I have inside. If you sit quietly, so for example, you just sit down to meditate and observe where do your thoughts go to? Just give yourself a minute of sitting quietly when you start to meditate and just check to see where does your mind run? What is that an indication of? Usually, where my mind runs is an indication of the inner threads that connect my mind to my old memories and all my inner programming. Wherever the programming is strong, my mind will be pulled there. And that will indicate where uncleanliness still lies within the soul. A totally clean soul, somebody who's you know, completely sorted out and resolve everything within them. When they sit to meditate, because there is no push or pull on the mind, the mind will settle into a state of stability. There is no push, there is no pull. The mind just comes to the present moment. It is still. It's like a compass needle, you know, the needle wavers if there is pull. And in time, it kind of points to north. The mind points to stability only when the inner pushes and pulls have been sorted out. So when the inside has been cleansed, the mind can be still. When the mind is still, the intellect can then go where it wants, when it wants, for how long it wants. 
when mind and intellect come together and focus on one thing in this state of cleanliness, then this is what we call yoga or meditation. Then I can direct this duo wherever I want. When a child focuses, you know, when it's time to study, and the child focuses on his study, if the child is undistracted, it means that deep inside it is clean, its memories are clean, it's not disturbed. Uncleanliness within the soul doesn't allow us to focus. It creates disturbance. You know, when you have pure water and then you stir it all up, the water becomes quite turbid, doesn't it? So turbidity inside is uncleanliness. You know, the tricky thing is that many times we think everything is fine. You've had a few good days, you know, you've not been bothered by anything too much, you know, maybe little things, but you're having a good run in life. You know, those days are really good, aren't they? <laughs> I'm going through that at the moment. And, um, you know, there's not too much on my mind that is um, a challenge. So sometimes it can deceive us. And we can think, okay, all is good. Intellect is, you know, non-stick. And there's not a lot of, you know, stuff coming up. Well, you know, I, I'm doing really good. My meditation is wonderful. But it's such a deception, really. Because the fact that we're here as spiritual students means that layer upon layer, you know, one layer after another, after another, after another, whatever is unclean inside is going to be revealed, is going to come up. You know, sometimes when I take it upon myself to clean up a room, not my own, I try to keep my own room relatively tidy, but it does happen occasionally to me too, where you might have a cupboard that you haven't looked at for a year or two, or maybe a decade, and you suddenly think, okay, right, I'm gonna clean this up and it's gonna take me a couple of hours. Well, famous last words, you know, um, two days later, and you still haven't been able to clean it all up. And working with the inner self is a lot like that. Sometimes you think, wow, you know, I'm doing really well, I'm making, you know, great strides. I've progressed so much, you know, the old sanskaras, the old habits are not bothering me as much. And then bang, you know, it's like a bomb goes off and so many new challenges come. And you kind of go, hang on, where did all that come from? What's going on? So a spiritual journey is a journey of deep cleanse and then deeper cleanse and even deeper cleanse. <coughs> and you know that you're progressing in spiritual life if every time the cleansing is taking you deeper and deeper into yourself. Like I said, you know, I work, I, I live with uh, a few brothers in the center here. So, you know, they'll do their cleaning. And then I step in and I do what I call a deeper cleaning. But there's one person in our group of souls, of uh, students here, who is even a, a better cleaner than even me. When he comes along and he cleans, even things that I didn't see, even the dirt that I didn't see, he picks up on. You know, the grout in the tiles, you know, um, all sorts of areas that he can see dirt in. And he's got the right tools. He's, he's got a little brush that cleans it all up. And, and it doesn't even take him very long because he's used to it. And I often think about that because the more I get used to doing deeper cleaning within me, the more my tools, my internal vision, the ability to let go, to completely allow the past to fly away, to slip away from my subconscious mind, to be able to catch those old feelings that are still there, to use the right approach, the right wisdom. You know, I like the word wisdom more than the word knowledge because I need very deep wisdom to transform what's going on inside me. Knowledge sometimes can be a bit theoretical. You know, I know I shouldn't have resentment. I know I shouldn't have hatred. I know I shouldn't have anger. 
need very deep wisdom to understand the root of that anger and to be able to completely yank it out, pull out that root so that I'm very aware every time the anger comes to surface again. So, you know, to become such a good being of yourself that every few months you're aware that the cleaning brush and the jiff are going deeper and deeper and deeper within the soul. And then not only are you aware of it, but the proof of the pudding is that others feel your energy. Others feel your vibration change. Others feel that the clarity or the purity or the cleanliness of your vision on situations, even on them, has um, completely transformed. The goodness, the love that you send out starts to become a natural default. It's not something that you're trying to do. It's not something you're putting on, you know. Um, it becomes your natural default. And the ability not to hold in the intellect anything that's happened, even if it happened yesterday, let it go, let it go. You know, remember the non-stick pan, so easy to clean it at the end of the day, so it's clean for the next day. In the same way, non-stick intellect, you know? This is why many times in our um, meditation practice, we are told before you sleep every night, check and clean. Make sure you don't take with you residue from today into tomorrow. We have enough residue. We have enough junk, rubbish inside us already. We don't need more. So remember, you know, these have to be kept very, very clean. And for that, cleanliness is near godliness. Don't ever think that a few moments of cleaning are a waste of time. Because even if you want to come close to God, the level of purity or dust-free or dirt-freeness inside you helps you to raise your vibration. You know, When we talk of an elevated soul, we're talking about an energetically, vibrationally clean soul. The cleaner the soul, the closer its energy, its vibrations to God. And there comes a point where I don't even have to try to remember God because my energy is so close to his that we live in a combined way. I think I might stop there. Um, look, I've been speaking now for almost 45 minutes. And... Um, I mean, I can go on for hours if you want to give me the stage, but I know that it's time for you to ask questions. So, yeah, maybe we just leave it at that for now. Yeah. Over to yeah. you, Manoj. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Non-stick intellect and even the lenses. So you're taking off your glasses now <laughs> so you can see more clearly. That's great. Okay, so uh, there's one question which has come in the chat box to me that... Uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, perspective of cleanliness, like the brother which is super clean than you and the other ones who don't know much about, I mean, you are you feel that your cleanliness is better than them. So uh, this typically happens, it's about something happening very commonly in households. The wife yeah. is got a different perspective of cleanliness and the husband, like for example, the brother has mentioned that I like to just put off my towel here. But my uh, wife says, can't even you do that? Can't even you take the uh, wet towel and put it outside? So he said, I have been like that. You can do that if you want. Let it, otherwise, it will just dry over there only. What's the big deal? So how do we deal with such tussles? Because that disturbs our mind and the wife particularly. The husband doesn't care at all. <laughs> yeah, it's really tricky, isn't it? Because we all come from different backgrounds. I mean, I remember when I first got married, um, you know, 30 years ago, and um, I, I, I've lived overseas for most of my life. 
And obviously, we don't have um, maids and servants as much as you know people do in India. So I, I was really used to helping out at home. We were all doing something, you know, somebody was wiping the dishes or cleaning the dishes, somebody was wiping the table. There's always something to do. And we would leave the kitchen clean at the end of the, the day. So when I got married, my husband comes from a very Indian family and nobody washes dishes. Um, so you leave the dishes in the sink and the maid comes and washes them. And if she's not coming that night, she comes the next morning and they're left in the kitchen overnight. Now, for me, that is unheard of. You know, it's like, uh, it's, oh God, it's like a big sin to do that. So I remember the first week of being married and I'm saying to my husband, well, now we've had dinner, now we need to wash the dishes. And he's saying, no, we're going out for some ice cream. And I said, okay, we'll go for ice cream, but let's wash the dishes first. And, uh, you know, each one thinks that their way is the right way. Um, I mean, <laughs> which way is the right way? It's all a matter of perspective. And like you said, you know, a towel will dry inside, but um, drying it out in the sun gives some of us a feeling that it's firstly crisp dry and it's really, you know, uh, bathed by the rays of the sun, which as we know, also get rid of germs. I think, you know, the wisdom that I have today, um, the wisdom that I have today tells me that each one is ultimately gonna do what they wanna do. So you can definitely say your bit. You can explain where you're coming from. But can you change someone's ways? I don't think so. Um, ultimately, with my husband and me, the way we resolve the whole dishes issue, of course, wife always wins, right? Always. <laughs> but um, jokes apart, I remember saying to my husband, I'll wash the dishes. You don't need to do it. I'll do it all myself, that's fine. Um, and then we'll go and have ice cream. So you get your way, but I will leave the kitchen clean. I think about a week or two later, he started to help me out. And I just said to him, I cannot possibly go against what I feel is I'm comfortable with, but I'm not asking you to be like me. So it's reached a place now where, you know, at least in our home, he will always make sure that the kitchen is left clean. Um, I don't know what he does when I'm not around and I don't think about it. What's the point? Um, I think ultimately you just keep doing what's right for you. You stay an example. Tell people why you do it, but I've stopped um, putting pressure on people to be like me. Honestly, I just think it's a waste of time. I, I don't think we can force anyone to be like us. Okay. That would be my view. Great. Uh, I'll just take the last question in the interest of time. Uh, this question is that in meditation, as you mentioned, cleansing, deeper cleansing, and that's what we do, all of us. So has God taken a contract just to get rid of my stuff all the time? I mean, I become dirty and he just makes me clean. Is that a contract with him? Yeah, I wish it was. It would make it a lot easier. You know, I could just call the contractor and get him to do my work. Um, unfortunately, no. The only thing that God does is he gives us the tools. And he says, okay, children, um, go for it. Clean as much as you want. I'm not going to do it for you. He doesn't do anything. Honestly, he does nothing. He just gives us the tools. Because it's not his karma. I dirtied myself, so I have to clean myself. He's very sweet, and he always says, I'm there to help you. But the only help he gives, really, is um, keeps encouraging us. You know, it's a bit like children if they're in a race. You know, all the parents are standing on the side yelling and screaming their child's name. Or if it's a football match, you know, parents will be saying, come on, you know, whatever your name is. Um, but you can't jump into the field and play football for, for your child. In the same way, you can provide the right tuition, you can provide the right coaches, you can you know, get them the right shoes, whatever it is, all the accessories. And that God does in a very beautiful way. Um, but he doesn't clean. I have to clean. I have to clean. 
Right, great. Amazing revelation. Yeah, he doesn't do the work. I have to do the work. Great, correct. Okay, uh, so with this, I would like to now invite our seniors. We have with us Dr. Ashok Mehta, who's always with us, and uh, also Sister Claudia. So over to Dr. Mehta first, yeah, for proposing the vote of thanks to you. So now, Ben, I have not met you, but I have met your family. I have met Charu Ben, who works at the Global Hospital, and your daddy, Mr. Barish. You have touched my heart. So beautiful presentation on cleanliness. I think what you have said in a simple words, have a non-sticky pen and a clean lens. You will see the vision will look good, goodness and purity. I think you have hit the nail on the head when you said that God gives you tools and you use them. It is not his karma, it is your karma you have to clean. I think as your name, but uh, Brother Manoj Bhai said, you are a gold, you are a real gold. And uh, as far as uh, your, we all share our family lives, I have my wife who is absolutely perfect. If you see a cupboard, I see her cupboard, see anything that is perfectly kept. And I sometimes pull out things and then everything gets disturbed and I try to put it, but it cannot be the same way it has been put. I have my daughter whose name is also Sonal and she's probably one up on her mother. Um, sometimes if I'm at home and uh, I have to travel, she comes to my home to pack my bag and everything has to be put in a perfect way. And I, I can see that in her life, you know, she's the one who was the architect of the global hospital. So you can see the, and that was the age of 22, 23. And then we go back in her life when she was a baby, she was a small child, we used to give her paper and pencil. And normally children will do, you know, she would make only circles, you know, which we realized later on that to make a circle for a child is a difficult job. So I think what you said is very right, but you know, your intellect, everyone's intellect works in a different way. When I'm in the operating room, I'm perfect. I cannot go even a millimeter here or there and nobody can talk, nobody can disturb me. I mean, there has to be that perfection. So I think uh, perspectives also keep on changing, but I have enjoyed listening to you. You have literally taken us absolutely flowing, free flowing. A beautiful lecture. It could be a, a master class on meditation. As a matter of fact, I must share with Manoj Bhai and uh, Anupma, that what we are doing in this values for life is amazing. Each one of these values that we are talking about and what we are recording could be a book by itself. It's a classic. It's a, one of the most beautiful experiences I have had. And I'm sure that we'll meet, our paths will cross someday. I always heard about you that you were in New Zealand and you know Gold Coast for some time. Uh, of course, I knew that you were in Australia, but and then of course uh, now you are in Middle East. Middle East is lucky to have you. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you so much. So over to Sister Claudia. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mehta. Yeah. Good morning from here. Maybe good evening for you, some of you. So it was very nice to hear you talking because you talk in a very practical way as a young soul and very practical and can share many things that we go in our life every day and also see how we can improve our home our, so we can get better life. Like you said, yes, we can never tell anyone to change because if they don't want to change, how much can we do? We just have to accept and work around. Yes, I have many times that I see this one. This is a practical in, in our daily life. So in the name of all of us who make the team of Values for Life program is India and Canada. And also in the name of everyone who are here, 
the all the the one who has the translation because they come from many different parts some from europe some from canada some from us so the name of all of us i like to thank you for being with us today thank you all for having me i mean you you you're pointing out things that i've said that i have touched you but really it is such simple knowledge and um you know, as you know it's not mine anyway it's just a sharing of um i guess the ups and downs that i've been through so thank you all for having me really so so appreciate it amazing thank you so much okay so uh, i'll just thank you all of you all and uh, i'll just quickly do a few announcements and then we'll go in the closing meditation so i hope sister sona that's fine uh, we may exceed a bit 5 10 minutes uh, that's fine thanks so uh, i'll just quickly do the announcements as i normally do oops uh, so uh, as all of you know that this month's values we started with perfection and cleanliness very closely related values someone who is clean will always be perfect so we end usually in the month end the sunday we do the silence retreat on that value so all of you are to welcome welcome for that it's next 12 hours so for us in india it's sunday tomorrow remember the times are 8:30 morning now so we have preponed it half an hour to adjust to the west coast uh, canada time and uh, for west coast it's 8 to 10 in the evening Uh, followed by is the next two values in the next month are the first one is faith a very important value for spiritual seekers and once i develop full faith then i can really become carefree so that's the next value after uh, faith so faith is taken uh, i mean uh, you all know meera didi very well she has been with us before as well so she'll join from uh, the, all the seniors actually double foreigners and many seniors are in madhuban because it's the season where a lot of festivities happening so she'll be joining us on sunday so remember it's 9 am india time and uh, as usual the workshop this time we have uh, sister aruna so it's the middle east and the <laughs> that part being uh, the sisters from their covering so sister aruna will be with us on saturday 9th april same time now 7:30 to 9:30 and all of you know that we have this special events values for life series uh, in which we have started discussing on the powers so the third power which we'll be taking is power to tolerate and it will be sister luciana who's the national coordinator of uh, brazil it will be the sunday 10th april and this is a elusive calendar thanks to kosha sister who always does this for us we'll be sending you the emails of this and it's also there on the display picture of the whatsapp so that you are notified of our events so with this i'll just uh, also end with saying that uh, you can send our emails and queries to vihasaindia@gmail.com or vancouver@ca.brahmakumaris.org these are our websites and all these are recorded the workshops particularly if you want to access them directly the second half the speaker's talk it is on omshanti.tk/workshops so with this i would now uh, pass it on to i'll stop sharing the screen over to sister sona for the meditation on cleanliness yeah Thank you, Madam Manoj. Yeah, should I play some background music? Is that okay? Yeah, any soft music would be lovely. Thank you so much. So put down your pens or your, you know, phones, whatever it is that you're holding, and really sit comfortably in your chair. And um, I just invite you all to take a deep breath in and let it out. And again, just center. yourself deep breath in and out and just feel the weight of your body in your chair as your mind is pulled into the here and now a few moments i'm going to spend with myself
among oneself. Just very pure honesty with myself. Feeling of wanting to know what do I need to pay attention to? Where do I need to clean? Where is the dirt within the soul still hidden? So turn your mind inwards. And just check. What are those regular negative feelings that come up? Whether towards myself, towards others, towards situations. Those negative feelings could be Anger, pain, sorrow, fear, whatever it might be. And just make a mental note. And then in this moment, I remember the one who gives me all the tools to clean, that one light that is so clean, so pure. And I feel that light shining down on me. He knows where I need to clean myself. Like a mother knows a child inside out. So I don't need to hide anything from him. And just in this moment, I allow his light. To reach all the places within me. where I may have identified some dirt. Yes, I have to do the cleaning. But if I soak the dirty clothes, my inner dirt in his light, if I share with him, what's happening within me. Then the cleaning is so much easier. So just allow God's light deep into, inside yourself. Let it reach every corner of the soul. soaking me with his goodness. And now with the courage to face myself, to change myself, I come back to the awareness of where I am. And I know I have the wisdom. I have all the tools to create a better, cleaner me.
शांति सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन फॉर दिस ब्यूटिफुल एक्सपीरियंस एज वेल and uh, i would now request uh, all of you all to open your videos so that sister sona can wave you all and also sister anu over to you for the photograph the quick one as you normally do yeah you want please switch on your video and sister sona we take this memorable moment with the picture and you said you don't tell people to become like you but your cleanliness definitely inspires and thank you that will go ahead with our cleanliness much more thank you Okay, everyone. Okay, I got it. Thank you. We'll share the picture with the review materials. Thank you once. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful this all. Thank you.